Uh, yes, if we look into the future, um, we can't really trust the models that we have because they're, they're, they're so wrong in, in assessing what's happened so far to the Arctic. So we have a real problem that, that the models are not giving uh, a good fit to the present changes, so we can't really use them to predict the future. Uh, what's missing are certain physical processes that, that obviously are important but aren't included in models and that, there's lots of possibilities there including the effect of waves on the ice. So if you have a snow cover uh, or an, a sea ice cover that's got snow on it that reflects something like 80% of the solar radiation that falls on it that's reflected straight back out into space. Whereas if there is, you have open water where the ice has melted or if you have bare land or tundra, that only reflects back about 10%. So you're changing from uh, a surface which is reflecting 80% of the radiation to a surface that's only reflecting 10% and 90% is being absorbed. So that's, that change is, uh, means a big increase in the amount of absorbed radiation uh, at the surface and that is an acceleration to global warming. Two big effects of permafrost and they, they both lead to more methane release. Methane is a very powerful greenhouse gas. It's uh, per molecule, it's over 20 times as powerful as carbon dioxide. I mean, it's got a much lower concentration in the atmosphere, so carbon dioxide is the main contributor to global warming. But methane is responsible for about a quarter of global warming, and if you if you find an additional source, that will give a, a big boost. Um, offshore, you have a seabed which in some areas is still frozen uh, since the last ice age and embedded in it are methane hydrates, that's methane held in solid form and as that permafrost, that offshore permafrost melts because the, the, the ocean temperature is warmer and so that, that's melting the, the seabed, uh, that's releasing the, perm the methane, it's coming up in big bubbles uh, to, the, to the surface. But then on land you also have an increase in methane release because the, the permafrost on land is also melting and becoming uh, the, the layer that becomes uh, water during the summer is getting thicker and that layer produces methane because it's just really like a, a, a big bog. Uh, and so the amount of methane release from, from uh, tundra on land is increasing as well. That, that will last longer. It's, it's a, uh, the release from offshore is a big kick that will give us a big boost to global warming for a short time, but then it'll all be gone. But the methane on land uh, is being released over a huge area and it'll last longer. So I think the, 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 the methane release from, from melting permafrost on land is going to be, in the end, the bigger effect.